Hey, what is going on everybody? In today's video, I want to talk about two particular characters in Marvel Strike Force who for a long time have been very popular, but I personally think that time is running out for them. Now, you know me, I like to rile people up and tell them why you shouldn't be investing in particular characters. Some that might seem obvious, but others might be a bit more contentious. So, I'm not sure which of these fall <laughs> that they fall under, but I want to give you my reasons why I think both Minerva and Hela are no longer worth building and you should cease to do so immediately now this is largely aimed towards people in the early and mid game stages anyone further than this probably already have them geared so it doesn't really matter anyways uh, but in terms of like tier 15 you know if you haven't gone that way don't do that uh, so for the first half we'll be talking about Minerva for the second half of the video we'll be talking about Hela why I no longer really use them and what alternatives you can do instead I'll be trying to take into account all usable game modes and why I think your resources are better used elsewhere so strap in tight and let's get this roller coaster started All right, and to start things off, I actually just wanted to start things here in my Boylan89 account. This is my baby account, of course, if you guys aren't familiar with this. And you'll see that I do have uh, Minerva and Hela. They're, they're currently favorited here, just so we can access them a bit quicker. And you will notice that I do have them a bit geared. So why is this? I actually got really lucky on Minerva, and I pulled her quite early on. I believe, like level 30 to 40, I pulled a 50 premium orb shard drop from Minerva, and uh, I unlocked her very early on, and that was great. And and I kind of thought that I needed her, but as I started getting further, and, and just for some context, you know, I started this account um, just before Kestrel's event campaign rolled around, which is why I managed to get her. So around then, you know, there was tons of characters coming out that really could do what she could do, or you didn't really even need her, to be honest. And so I was just gearing her anyways. I, I She was helpful for me in the beginning of the Villains campaign, but I really had no other option at that point. So if you haven't unlocked Minerva, uh, by the time you get to unlocking war which she's currently in then you know you really don't need to go for her because in the war store there's so many other characters that are worth getting other than her ghost long shot some of these ones on my favorite list already because i'm still farming them out of the war store ghost long shot and bishop which are three some of the most important war characters in the game now minerva as, as far as a character goes you know her, her traits are okay villain cosmic tech Kree, those are the most important ones, and what can you do with that? So, obviously, the villains for the villains campaign, you know, again, I did use her there uh, because I really had very little option at that time in the game, but as soon as I did have some more broader options, you know, she slowly got replaced, and uh, she was available for the cosmic section as well for the campaigns. But since I started roughly around the Kestrel campaign, as soon as I got Kestrel, and I'll be perfectly honest, she soloed most of those nodes for me. Now, I know that if you miss the Kestrel campaign event, not everyone's going to have her. So, Minerva serves a small purpose if you, for whatever reason, missed out or skipped a bunch of other campaign event characters. We're seeing power creep at an all-time high, basically starting from Silver Surfer and Kestrel onwards, and that every new patch has strong characters that you almost don't need a ton of the past ones to be able to do what you can do. So, for example, when we had the Infinity Watch patch, uh, you know, a lot of those characters were cosmic, therefore kind of eliminates Minerva's necessity in the cosmic campaign. Kestrel was also cosmic, and, and you could basically just smash things. And I did solo the cosmic campaign with basically Thor and uh, Kestrel. And that's it. I just went in with, like, two characters, and Kestrel was enough to basically single-handedly solo those nodes. It was absolutely nuts, because you don't actually need to go in with five characters in the campaigns in order to get that. It's just if anyone dies, you know, you don't get the three-star, but that's, you know, we're, we're kind of getting a little bit off-topic. But where else can you use her? So she does have the Kree tag. That's also somewhat important. So she is usable in Nexus 8-4 to 86. So I do want to jump over to some of the campaign uses for her and where she is usable, but where you don't really need to too much. And for this purposes, I am uh, on my baby account, although I can still look at it, which is nice, even though I don't have it unlocked because that's level 70 plus. Maybe I should have been on my main account for this, but uh, we have the Kree, Guardian, and Asgardian tag here. So there are other choices that you can use if you're not using Minerva for this, namely Gamora, who had a huge buff, and she could probably slice her way through this herself, but alongside Phylavel, who is also a Kree character. Now, again, if you miss some of these really important characters over the last 
last few patches, you're probably playing pretty casually and therefore, um, you know, maybe Minerva might serve a purpose for you. But that's a very small minority of players who won't have access to some of these characters. So for that reason, that's why I don't think she's all that usable. There's other characters here. And like I said about the campaigns, you don't need a full five-man team necessarily to win this. It's just a three-star at you don't want anyone to die. But for this area here, there's really nothing all that important. Karnak no longer is important to farm on this node anymore with Yo-Yo available in the raid store. So getting a three star on this 8-4 to 8-6 section of Nexus isn't that important. We just need to kind of get to the end, get to the next tag so that you can uh, work your way towards do more. So getting a one star is perfectly fine and you can carry that with the likes of Gamora and Phi Lavelle. And if you really must, and what interestingly actually since we're talking about Hela later on, She's part of that Asgardian tag for this 8-4 to 8-6 section of Nexus as well. But again, there are other options available that can kill them very quick. Get you that 1-star or 2-star and move on. Now, you don't really need to 3-star these nodes because it's not all that important. So, that's what I wanted to say there. Uh, the other part of where uh, Minerva is usable, of course, is in the Gamma Raid. Now, I hate saying that a character is worth building because of the Gamma Raid. It is one of the trashiest raids to ever come to this game. I think slowly, slowly, slowly that they will be updating this. They did update Phylavel to the Kree tag as well, and this gives us more options for characters to use. But I just can't, I can't tell somebody to level Minerva to like gear tier 13, 14 for uh, the Gamma Raid, which happens once every six weeks. Now, it is semi-important, but in, in, it's not really, because in terms of raid season points, you're going to get way more progressing further in the likes of Ultimus, you know, 7.5, Doom Raid, these things as you go into the future. So I just don't think it's worth gearing characters specifically for the gamma raid i just don't think it's worth it now for the other raids alpha and beta of course there's way other options in the in the and the choices for characters are just significantly better so that's what i have to say there she was just really great back in the day and unfortunately she just no longer serves that purpose anymore mass lobotomy she has a really amazing lifesteal for 15 percent health but really that was kind of about it she does revive of course but her cooldowns are very long and as far as dark dimension goes dark dimension 2 we can start there uh dark dimension 2 has tons of other options because you can use anyone as long as they're gear tier uh 13 i believe it is so you can use the likes of uh you know kestrel kest watch infinity watch secret avengers even you know coming up the way so these are all valid raid usable characters that also double for uh sustainability in dark dimension as well so going forward into three and four cosmic again you don't really need to because Kest watch has just eliminated the need for minerva unfortunately now in terms of doom raid she is kind of that fifth member of the team kind of between her and shuri it depends on what you have available to your roster but frankly you know if you're in the early and mid game doom raid is something that you'll be thinking about six to nine months down the road or more i don't know how long it takes to level and uh, by the time you get there, there's going to be a tech option for sure. I think within the next two patches, we're going to get either a tech uh, a tech patch or a bio patch in, in whichever order. And as we talk about um, Hela, we know that there's a death pool coming. A death pool. I don't know why I said that. A mystic patch with death pool and other mystic characters. So she's going to get knocked to the side as well. So there isn't a ton of reason for Minerva anymore. And it's sad because by the time she was put into the war store which she's not she is in the war store and actually surprisingly not in the mega orb but she is in the premium orb it just was no longer that useful to bring her up anymore and and i don't know how contentious this is going to be because a lot of people love minerva but yeah unfortunately she's past her expiry so the next character i want to talk about is hella and now hella this one might be a little bit more contentious because people know how i feel about legendary characters and hella is required to unlock black bolt so we're gonna start from the beginning so some of hella's traits Villain, Cosmic, Mystic, Controller, Asgardian. So the controller is not super important for what I'm going to talk about. So where can you use Hela? So she is usable. And once again, just like Minerva, I do have her leveled up a little bit. Now, that's because for my baby account, you know, I wasn't sure if I actually needed her or not. So I kind of did it anyways just because I thought that I would have a place for her. And then I kind of figured I really didn't, you know, I didn't really use her or Minerva both in places where I thought I would. Because of the new characters coming out in the game that I managed to unlock, namely, you know, from Kestrel onwards, a lot of these filled the slots for where Hela would be used in other campaigns and so on. So let's start at the campaigns because that's, I guess, what's more important for early and mid-game players. Villain 7-4 to 7-6. Now this might sound familiar again to you guys, uh, this is the, well, the Hella Unlock section. Now, these happen at level 70 plus. So if you're not quite there yet, don't worry about that because some of the characters that you need for this in 7.4 to 7.6, ironically, to farm Hella is 
mystic characters, mystic villain characters. So Hela fulfills her own criteria to use on her own node to help three-star her. But the reason why I don't think you really need to do this is because I don't think Black Bolt is worth going for. I've said this in previous videos in uh, my Legendaries videos, you know, don't build them. I do not think that Black Bolt is a very good character anymore. He is not worth unlocking, and I don't think that you need to go for this at this point, because which means you don't need to shard farm for Hela and, and, and basically build her, in my opinion, because this also does lead into Ebony Maw. So some people ask me, well, if you don't get Black Bolt, you won't get Ebony Maw. Now, I'm not going to go into huge detail about this. If you do want to, you know, get my thoughts on this, do watch the Legendaries video that's on the front of my channel, and I'll leave a link to that as well at the end of the video. But Ebony Maw is also falling down the wayside, and you don't really need him, especially if you're coming in as an early and mid-game player watching this, because by the time you get to the point where you might need Black Bolt, you don't need Black Bolt, but if you, to the point where you might need Ebony Maw, there's definitely going to be other choices down the line that will replace him, so don't worry about that. And that's what I want to get at. Now, you do need to sort of pass, at least at a one-star level, these nodes, because I think that getting towards the end of the Villains chapter is important. 7-9, which now has Iceman, and he actually has way more value, and we're not talking about him, than Hela does right now because of part of that Astonishing X-Men team. But in order to get to Nexus Chapter 8, all you have to do is actually clear Villains 7-1, and that unlocks Nexus 8, so you don't necessarily have to complete the Villains Chapter campaign right away in order to get there. So that's my thoughts on that. Another section, like I mentioned uh, earlier on with Minerva, is that Nexus Chapter 8-4 to 8-6, because there isn't as Guardian section here. And that does cover Hela, but there are other characters. If you just want to one-star this note, again, Gamora, Philavel. Uh, we'll cover this as well, and uh, being uh, Kree and Guardian, and Thor. Thor actually has some use because of the Wave 1 Avenger tag, which is useful later on in uh, uh, Doom Raid. Yeah, sorry, Doom War. Yeah, so he is usable in Doom War as well. So almost to some degree that Thor is worth building more than uh, Hela is at this point, which is kind of sad to say. You know, she is a really good character, though, and I'll admit, she did carry me, you know, for a good chunk of the last year or so. She's been out since... November 2019, I'm pretty sure. It's been almost two years. Not quite two years for Hela, but almost. So she's definitely had a great run. And same with Minerva. Both of them had almost about a year and a half of great, you know, being up at the top of the roster, being highly recommended by content creators and, and just every player alike. But now they're just both kind of falling down the wayside. Now places you could also run Hela, of course, again, just like Minerva, they're both cosmic. So... Dark Dimension 3 or 4 Cosmic, but again, with Kestrel unlocked, with Gamora and the Kest Watch team, Infinity Watch, whatever you have available to you, those are just better options and a much better meta team to do than for these characters. Now, uh, she is currently what I would say a fifth member at this moment in time in the Doom Raid, but as soon as Deathpool and the rest of the Mystics, the New Warriors Cloak and Dagger come out for next patch, she's getting dumped just really quickly because Deathpool, and we're not talking about Deathpool in this video either, but part of her passive gives ability energy to Mystic characters. Now the problem with this though is that Hela's Summon Greg does have the Mystic Tag, which then sucks up more energy that Deathpool would give to other min uh, other allies instead it could go to Greg by accident. So another reason why you're going to want to dump Hela, also Deathpool has mechanics that are very similar to Hela's Death Knives Ultimate that spreads debuff so you're going to be able to have that on another character and Deathpool is going to be a campaign event character which means that she is very accessible for early and mid game players she's also cosmic so for the most part she's just going to directly replace Hela later on and that's another reason why you don't need her so again this is going to be contentious with Hela I think to you know to recap I think because I don't think Black Bolt's worth it and therefore I don't think Ebony Maw's worth it especially from an early and mid game perspective if you're in the late game you probably don't need my advice anyways and you already have them built up like I said earlier so my suggestion for late game players if you're watching this you know don't take her to tier 14 or 15 depending on where you're already at with her because I think it's going to be a waste of resources and that's mystic gear that you're definitely going to want for her specifically that's mystic gear that you're going to want to put towards death pool who's coming up pretty soon so I would hold the line on that and then don't take her any higher than you already have at this point whoever's watching this whenever you're watching this do not put any more resources into her i don't plan to do that for hella and minerva for my baby account here and 
Um, I'm kind of disappointed I didn't learn this earlier. I didn't think about this too hard because I thought I would have a use for her. I thought that maybe I would level quicker, so I would have gotten to Dark Dimension 2, but I'm only level 65, and so the leveling process is taking me a fair bit of time. And that's what people who aren't level 80 need to keep in mind, is that it's going to take time for you to get to these level thresholds. And by that point, more and more characters are going to come out into Marvel Strike Force and replace the need to even level any of these characters. So let me know in the comments down below, am I just completely wrong or, you know, I, I'm okay with that too. I just don't think, I think as time goes on, the more important characters are going to be the ones basically within the last nine months. I would say from the end of last year onwards, there's a few exceptions. Uh, you know, that's not what the, this video is made for. But yeah, you should be focusing on the newer characters and how that relates to your game meta now. Characters like Minerva, characters like Hela were great. They were top, you know, for such a long time. Unfortunately, we have to put them in the dustbin because they need to be shelved. And that's my thoughts, and you can trust me because I would never lead you astray. So with that being said, stay safe and healthy, guys. And until next time, I'll see you all later. Boylan signing out.